I can... present and get going. Please. Okay, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Chair O'Brien, Chairman O'Brien. Um, so I'm I'm Greg Kimsey, the elected county auditor, um, here this morning to talk about the um, requirements set forth in state law for the county council to uh, um, adjust the council district boundaries. Um, and I have um, really just two requests this morning. Um, the first is that you use existing precinct boundaries. Um, I'll get into that in a little more detail, uh, but to use existing precinct boundaries. And then uh, the second is to do this as quickly as possible. And I'm gonna get into that in a little more detail as, as well. Um, and then I would ask you to uh, keep uh, a date in mind, February 8th. Uh, so, a little more detail on all those points. Um, the existing precinct boundaries, uh, which is, as you might recall, uh, the county redistricting committee, all five members of that committee uh, unanimously supported um, the idea of using existing precinct boundaries. And everything I talk about today, the schedule I talk about today, um, depends upon the use of those existing precinct boundaries. Any, any changes from the existing boundaries will um, uh, ha have, the, have the potential to dramatically impact uh, the, the potential timing of this. Um, so now to a little more details. Um, when I say existing precinct boundaries, those boundaries have been impacted by the state plan. Um, uh, uh, potentially by actions that the legislature could take. Uh, they have up until February 8th to make adjustments to the state plan, and then also adjustments required by state law to uh, um, be, due to the fact that there are more than 1,500 voters in a precinct. Um, GIS and elections office have already implement, already put into, a, um, into the system. They've created maps that reflect those of the state plan. Uh, the 1,500 voters uh, impact, and, and also annexations. Can't forget about annexations. Um, it's also worth noting that in state law, this work should have been completed by December 30. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't, and so here we are. Um, so once again, please use existing precinct boundaries as adjusted by the state plan, by annexations, by uh, the 1,500 voters, and please do this as quickly as possible. So again, that February 8th date is the uh, date when you start laying this schedule out, and that's what election people do. We, we are planners. Um, we create timelines. Uh, February 8th is a date we would offer up to you to have for you to make a decision on what the uh, five council district uh, boundaries should be. And you might ask, well, Greg, how do you get to February 8th? And it starts with, uh, well, we have an April election. So if you work back from the April 26th election date and the work that's required to put into effect these, um, uh, the state plan, the annexations, the 1500 voters, and the maps that you, you will approve, uh, that's how we work back to February 8th. Because on April 26th, uh, for that April 26th election, now we now we get into the kind of the timeline, the details of the timeline. But April 26th, almost a month before that, we are required to mail provide ballots to military and overseas voters. Which means that March 11th is when we are required to begin preparations for the April election. Uh, we have to program the election, we have to create and proof the ballots, we have to print the ballots. You know, all the work that goes into um, creating an election. So working back from March 11th, in order for us to have the um, changes to the precincts that are a result of what you will do with the council boundaries, what the state has done, uh, what, what cities and towns have done with annexations and the 1500 voters, uh, we think you need to have the final, final approval uh, at a council hearing on March 1. And then continuing uh, backwards in time, I understand you have a two week notice for council hearings, which gets us to February 15. 
uh, you would then at that point have a hearing on a proposed map, uh, which would reflect your your um, your desire for the council district boundaries. And prior to February, prior to your consideration of that uh, map on February 15, elections and GIS uh, needs at least five days to prepare and proof the maps, including the legal descriptions for you to have that hearing. And voila, we are at February 8th. So that's it. Please use that's existing precinct boundaries and, and please do it as quickly as possible. That's all I got. Greg, will you repeat what the 1500, who these, what, what is the deal with 1500 voters? I'm sorry. I, sure, I'm sure. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, the elements in this are, um, you know, you, you, you create the boundaries of the five district, five council districts. Uh, the state committee, the state redistricting committee has put forward changes to legislative and congressional district boundaries. And then, um, as we do every year, we are required to adjust precinct boundaries when we find more than 1500 registered voters in a precinct. Um, and then, of course, also, I, I guess I mentioned annexations. So the 1500, um, I, I don't want to say it's routine or housekeeping, but it's kind of routine housekeeping. Something we do every year. That's 1500 per uh, precinct is what yes. you're talking about. Yeah. And that's why you're so concerned about precinct boundaries. Among other things, yeah. Okay, yeah. It'd be, yeah. Okay. Are there questions of the council uh, of uh, Mr. Kimsey? Okay. Uh, I, I would say good luck. That's uh, we're going to have to really work hard and fast in order to make any of those deadlines. Um, because it seems like it's really time is really moving right along, but we're holding this work session today so that we can get to work on it. I think yeah, it, I... it's uh, it's unfortunate that the redistricting committee was unable to come to a consensus or or a, a vote that would have moved something forward, a map forward, uh, and because um, they <laughs> they had more time to spend on it, so. Uh, now it's left to us and, and I'm sure we'll do our best to try to do it. So I guess, do we have the master that can help show what these maps are? I, I mean, is this yeah. what the, first of all, I guess the map that appeared in the voters pamphlet that the charter commission created and then there were two other maps that were created by the redistricting committee one receiving two votes the other receiving three votes so i don't know what they're labeled are they a1 a2 or b a1 b b1 i don't know but it'd be good to see those maps yeah 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 thank you chair um yeah you have uh yeah it's a very tight time frame and um uh, I'll, I'll right back at you Good luck and, you know, it will require a, a, a very high level of diligence and energy to accomplish the uh, timeline I set forth, but you do have um, fantastic resource available to you in GIS and, and in particular, Paul Newman, who was the master for the, uh, uh, the, the county redistricting committee, but also is, uh, I'm sh I know is available to you as uh, his, role, his role as GIS. And in fact, um, uh, Rich Cooper in elections office and Paul Newman in GIS have already created, um, have reflected the changes to both those A2 maps and the B2 maps, the changes that are a result of the state uh, committee plan and also the um, 1500 voters and the annexation. So those maps are available to you um, today, I believe. I, I think actually they might've been available to you even prior to today. Paul, do you wanna talk on that for a bit, minute? Well, yeah, uh, I see that I have, uh, uh, may I share my screen right now? Yes, you should be able to. Okay, I'll bring up map. Can people see the map in with green boundaries? We can. If you could make it just slightly larger, it might be good. Oh, well, oh boy. Um, I have it. And counselor, if, if you, you can, can, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, Chair O'Brien, if you, on the left side of your screen, if you move your cursor, you'll see a little magnifying glass that you can actually make it bigger on your end as well. 
Thank you. Right. Well, I, I do have uh, several PowerPoint slides here that I can run through that provide an overview uh, Thank of you. the various maps. Go ahead. Yeah. Good. Um, so what we're seeing here. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. The top. This is the this is the initial map that was put forward by the Charter Review Commission and was on the November ballot. Uh, what you're seeing on the maps are the, uh, besides the district IDs, are the, uh, the population uh, variants. Uh, each district has an ideal population uh, that's balanced. So basically the total population of Clark County, about 503,000 people uh, divided by five. Then whether it's a, you know, Minus 5,442 below the target. It just means it's it's under under that ideal population. Uh, here in District Two, it's 1,600 people above the target. Uh, so this is where we started, and uh, started moving boundaries to rebalance the population uh, within uh, each district. Uh, Madam Chair, can I ask a question right away on that? Is that based on census data or is that based on the forecast that the voters pamphlet put out that uh, turned out to be inaccurate? So these numbers, are they the census data and the most accurate? Good question. These, these population numbers are different from what was in the voters pamphlet. These are based on 2020 census, April 1, which is the appropriate population data set to use for redistricting. Very good question, Councilor Medvedi. Thank you for asking. Any other questions on this? Actually, I do have one. So, just to follow up, then the Charter Review Commission map was drawn before the census numbers were out. Is that yes? Okay. Yes, it was balanced on the best population numbers that we had at the time. It was balanced in uh, I think uh, May of uh, 2021, uh, they were our kind of our in-house numbers that had not yet been, I guess, recalibrated for the census. We recalibrate every 10 years uh, in terms of our ability to predict population or estimate population. And, uh, but those numbers were, uh, while they're, they're reasonable, they were not recalibrated with the most recent census. I also understand, Paul, that they were like 5,000, a little over 5,000 off on at least one district. Well, yes, you're correct. As you see with District 5. Yeah. So the, if, even then, using the 2021 numbers, their numbers were off enough that lines should have been moved. You know, they shouldn't have uh, placed over 5,000 people more or less in a district that that isn't the correct distribution. So go ahead. Right, right. And, uh, and again, yeah, the census, because of the pandemic, the census was late and, uh, this, this was not yet released. Well, just, a, a observation, Paul, it seems that these numbers now that the population information is available are so far off that of the three maps that have been given to council at this point is really down to two. But would that be correct? Correct. This was never considered uh, a map to, to move forward with. Uh, that was, this was on the ballot, uh, but it was never really considered as an option or an alternative by the committee. It's interesting because I don't think that the voters in our county have that information yet. Uh, so somehow we, I, I think, need to communicate that because there's obviously a propensity on the part of the people to uh, favor um, what they voted in favor of, and they think that they voted in favor of this these five districts as marked here. So it's, uh, I think, a communication issue that that faces us too. And Madam Chair, I, I do want to re double tap on that because unfortunately, one of our local papers editorial 
you know, hearkened on this, the will of the people, but the, the will of the people was not to draw a map that was unusable. And so no I mean, we need to change that narrative because we do have a lot of work to do. And, and, and in a very short amount of time, because of the pandemic, the late census data and, and the redistricting committees on a inability to uh, come to consensus or vote for, you know, we shouldn't have to do this. If I, if I had you as a jury, Greg, I would have sent you back to work and not let you quit on it until you came up with a, a map, because this is going to be really tough to do in the timeline that you laid out. I have a, I have a question. Uh, Paul, I'm, I'm seeking some clarification on something you said earlier. Um, when uh, the map, when the Charter Review Commission was working on this, uh, can you talk about that process and the information that was given to them and where that map ended up? Can you talk about that one more time? I will, so they, I can, please right. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I will mention that I was not the person working with the Charter Review Commission on this this map or the, the in, in terms of balancing the population. Uh, that was another uh, GIS okay. person. Um, so I guess all I can share about it was is what I've been told is again it was uh, it was finalized rebalanced in uh, early spring of 2021 uh, using the best population numbers that we had at the time. Yeah. So at that time, when you said it was when you say it was rebalanced, so mm -hmm. uh, how out of balance was that map that was rebalanced in the spring? How out, of, how out of balance was it initially? Uh, so when it when it came yeah. out, when and so yeah. you say that it went through a rebalancing uh, mm -hmm. process. Um, right. Was it as out of balance as what we are seeing in front of us now? Oh no, 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 no. Okay, so the map that the Charter Commission did end up with, based on the best information available at the time, was as balanced as they could get it. Yes. As GIS could get it. Excuse yes. me, Paul, just a minute. As balanced, it had five over 5,000 uh, people in one of these districts, maybe five, District 5, that was either more or less. Mm -hmm. That was at the end of the Charter Commission working on this. That, that is my understanding. It was off by at least 5,000. And when you have precincts that are limited to 1,500 people, that's quite a few, you know, precincts right there. You do, you have to balance it more. So my understanding was it was at the time over 5,000 people. We didn't learn of the 5,000 uh, difference there until the census was, was released in October and we had a chance to download it and look at it at that time. Okay. Right. Thanks. So to so to clarify, the map that was put into the voters pamphlet and that the charter commission worked with was as balanced as possible based on the available data. The 5000 out of balance like what we are seeing on the map in front of us came with the census data which was not known at the time the charter map was created. Correct. Thank you. In the well, what I do know, excuse me, just one second. I just want to make one comment here, one additional comment. What was known at the time when the Charter Commission made this map was that they gerrymandered three sitting councilors into one district, thereby eliminating two of the majority of the council. They did not tell voters that was what they were doing. The subcommittee member actually stated in the newspaper that they knew this, but shut up and would not speak about it anymore. So I think that's probably something that uh, as we look at this map, we need to be careful about uh, if they had if if they had actually put red dots on this map where every counselor was located geographically. I, I, I seriously doubt that this would have been uh, passed. 
the way it was. This would not be, have been the voters' um, uh, wishes. I, I just think it is wrong on its face. But I just want to make that statement publicly that the Charter Commission did gerrymander this map. I would uh, suggest that that's a really serious allegation. Yeah, make serious allegations without evidence. Um, I would caution against that. That may be your opinion. The evidence, uh, the evidence that here. is available is that three people that are in were placed in one district. Three sitting councilors were placed in one district. That's evidence enough. If, well, that that is not evidence. <laughs> That's a data point. But if you're going to accuse people of um, operating contrary to the law, you better have some evidence. And you're doing it here on the record, and I don't think it's appropriate. No, I, I, having been based on evidence and what are facts and what are evidence, actually the outcome is evidence. Julie, I appreciate your opinion, but uh, and certainly even if the voters had intended it, it would have been an unlawful intent because the state law prohibits uh, disfavoring candidates or parties or advantaging a party or candidates. So, you know, and whether the Colombian reported that accurately, I can't say that, but they did report that the committee knew it. And instead of not doing it, they did it, but decided to not tell anybody. Uh, which is further evidence that they intended to do it and pass it by the voters without them knowing it. So we have a lot to fix here be, be, between uh, the numbers and uh, not favoring one party over another uh, to comply with state law. Uh, and I'm, Greg, I understand it's going to cause a lot of second and third order impacts if we actually have to move around PCO districts, but that may inevitably be what has to happen uh, depending on what Paul presents us uh, on these PCO districts and the numbers to make sure everything's balanced and and fairly done without gerrymandering as a result. Uh, Councilor Medvedji, if I could, um, you know, if, 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 as long as you use existing precinct boundaries as adjusted by the state plan, uh, by city and town annexations, and by the 1500 voters, uh, we can we can get this done in time for that April election. Um, so that's that's really our only uh, real again our major request here: use those existing precinct boundaries and to get it done as quickly as possible. February eighth, three things. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah, and I'll just add one more thing, and we can move on. Um, given already we have accusations of gerrymandering, this is likely going to end up in Superior Court. So the sooner the three of you adopt the map, the better. All right, are we ready to move on? Are you, I don't understand. Oh. oh. I don't understand that uh, comment, Councillor Olson. Have you disqualified yourself from the process or who are the three? What are we talking about here? Well, I think we'll let the process play out. It'll be probably become pretty clear, but no, I'm not disqualifying myself from the process. Well, then let's just agree to look at the facts, look at the data, Look at the maps, look at the population, and just forget the editorializing. Okay, there is no point that, in it. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go to the next map. This is alternative A2, which was created uh, by members of the redistricting <laughs> committee. And let me just bounce back and forth briefly. So here's the, the first one we saw, and then A2, and you see that the population numbers uh, come down you know, significantly or, or really are reaching a point of balance. Uh, you see some numbers of you know, District 3 is 191 above, District 4 is 53 above target. Um, those are great population numbers in terms of uh, reaching a balance uh, to their ideal population.
And this was the map that was uh, proposed by, that got two votes, correct, that was proposed by the Republicans on the uh, uh, redistricting committee? Yes. And that in public meetings, they said they were specifically drawing to be sure Councillor Bowerman was included in District 3. You don't need to say yes or no on that, Paul. It's in the public record. <laughs> so it's okay. And Councillor Lentz, I saw that, I'm sure, many days after you did, because I, I was not following it in the same way. I want to just make it perfectly clear that I had absolutely nothing to do with that statement or anything associated with that. So please keep my name out of this. Well, I look forward to your vote reflecting that. Thank you. My vote will reflect something different. It will not reflect what was in a newspaper or comments on me. Any questions or comments, further comments about this map? before we move to the next one. I do. So are we just looking at population um, numbers right now, Paul, with regard to the maps? Yes, we are. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Yes, Paul. All right. The next alternative, the second alternative is B2. Uh, this is the map that received three votes and Again, the um, the population either above or below target is uh, is reflected there. Paul, I have a question on this one as well, please. Um, so this, so I listened to a number of the redistricting committee meetings, um, and, and the charter the charter um, stipulates that the redistricting master shall submit a plan or just a redistricting plan. Would you consider this to be your plan? Uh, I think this was the first map that you submitted to the group uh, prior to the discussion about alternative maps. No, this is not the map that that I submitted. This is a map that uh, uh, I was requested to create uh, two different alternatives uh, by two members of the redistricting committee. And uh, this is one of the maps that I submitted. Uh, the goal of this map was to be uh, nearly nearly the same or kind of follow the same pattern as the uh, as what was on the ballot. I also submitted a second map that I called alter alternative C uh, that was nothing like this. It tried to in include more of the city of Vancouver in district three. Okay, so just so per the charter where it says the redistricting master must submit a plan to the committee, did you actually, based on feedback from the committee or your conversations with the committee, come up with your redistricting plan to submit to the committee? Working with the committee, we tried to find consensus uh, in terms of what I would submit. And in the end, because the, uh, as you see, the, uh, we really couldn't reach consensus. Uh, I submitted both maps, uh, alternative A2 and B2. Uh, given okay. that, yeah, hoping hoping to find consensus, we uh, uh, but weren't we're not able to find consensus. Okay, well, and that's the part where I'm trying to understand the disconnect between the language, pretty clear language in the charter to how we got to to two maps. Because um, it doesn't really contemplate two maps, nor allow for two maps. Um, Council, Councilor Olson, if I could, uh, as the uh, former chair of the redistricting committee, I'll, I'll speak to that issue. Um, we were we were advised the committee was advised that uh, the, there would be no prohibition against the master submitting two plans to the committee, and that's what was done. Okay, and I appreciate the advice. Thank you, Greg. And I know you're under advice. I don't. It's difficult to, to see where there's any contemplation in the charter that would consider two maps. <laughs> it says shall and a, it doesn't say two. <laughs> so, but I appreciate the advice that you received. Paul, are you able to overlay one 
over the other. I, I wanted to see the numbers compared side by side as to which one uh, was closer in numbers. And also there <laughs> seems in the last map, there's such a weird cutout into district four from district three. I wanted to see <laughs> what that looked like in the prior uh, A2. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, okay, so I can, uh, of course, with these PowerPoint slides, they're fixed. I, uh, so I, I can't, we have okay. two options. Well, well, we have two options. Uh, we can review these PowerPoint slides, or I can set the PowerPoint slides aside and bring up my GIS software and uh, do pretty much anything we want to look at. Uh, it'll just take a little bit, you know, a few more seconds uh, for could me you just to make flip arrangements. back again, just so I can see the prior slide. Yeah, yeah. So here's A2. And tell me when you want to go back. Ready. I'll bounce back and forth a little bit. I'll make a comment too uh, regarding the numbers. Um, you know, the census data is the is is the data source to use the 2020 census. But there's uh, you should know, and you'll read about this in some of the papers regarding the census data that there's actually error injected into the census data that uh, to prevent. Um, really to protect people's privacy. And uh, so I'll, how much we really, I mean, we know that at the state level, the numbers are 100% true. And as you get into smaller units, uh, such as counties, uh, or certainly certainly the tiny, uh, the, the census data comes to us in like what, we, what they call blocks, census blocks, which are, in many cases, the size of city blocks. And uh, and I can point to some areas that I, I know are incorrect. Um, again, that's to protect individual privacy or household privacy. Uh, I, my point is, is that when we see numbers like 167 above uh, or 219 uh, above target, I don't get too concerned uh, about that because it's it's uh, because because of that error that's been injected. Um, you know, a thousand people that might be a little more um, something to to take action on to see if there are any other options to to rebalance. But uh, levels of 100, 200, uh, you know, in terms of difference between the the districts, uh, I don't get too excited about. And, and Paul, could you just flip back one more time? I wanted to make one additional note. Thank yeah, you. Certainly. So while uh, he's making note of that, Paul, do you have, can you give us an idea of the approximate number that is set aside for these various privacy issues um, within this county as a whole, or <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, I wish I knew. I, I have asked the Census Bureau or contacts at the Census Bureau and they haven't released that yet. Uh, I mean, at the, uh, at, yeah, I, I just don't know that. I mean, the current, you know, I, I think we could com compare it to, surveys uh you know the you, know, you hear about a survey and they'll say you know the confidence of this survey is you know plus or minus two percent or something like that um i would like to have a number of that you know regarding the uh the county but i don't uh that just hasn't been released yet um what, what, they, what they do tell us what they do tell us is that the um you know, as you aggregate the data to, um, again, I receive the data in, in areas that are about the size of city blocks. Uh, as you aggregate the data into precincts and 
districts, it becomes more accurate. And certainly as a county, more accurate. Um, you know, the current total number of people in, uh, in Clark County is about 503,000. And I, in terms of my gut level feeling, I doubt if that varies by, you know, more than 2%, but I have no way of backing that up or showing you uh, a document on that yet. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions or requests here of the master? One, just, just for clarification, so we're talking population hour, are we going to be moving on to the other um, criteria for the RCW, like the compactness and? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. If we're ready to move on. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, before we get into compactness, would you like to see a graphic of what Greg was talking about in terms of the legislative districts and the impacts it has on precincts? Sure. Good. Okay, this will be a little tangent. Um, so these are the current uh, election precincts that are in place. Uh, about you know, over 300 of them. Uh, the state redistricting committee <clears throat> updated the legislative districts, which are shown in red here. Uh, I'll draw your attention to I'm going to bounce back and forth because what you're going to see are some precincts split. So if you watch this area where, where I'm circling my mouse and I go onto the next slide, you'll see that this legislative boundary right here is splitting this precinct. So that's a very clear example. I'll go back one more time. Does anybody I, actually see his? I don't see your I, mouse moving. I don't see the oh. mouse either. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, then um, thank you for, for letting me know about that. Uh, if you look uh, just south of Battleground, uh, there's a large, there's a really between Battleground and and City of Vancouver, maybe a little bit to the east, there's a, a precinct uh, being split. Maybe I can zoom in here a little bit. Is that zooming for you? Yes. All right, and oh, good. I can let me go a little bit further here. That may be all I can zoom in. Um, so you can't see my mouse that's wiggling here. Or no. Okay. Okay. I can okay. See it's it. there. It's just the really, really small. Yeah, yeah. Little. It's small, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is this is the area, and I'll kind of go back and forth uh, with the slide. Oops. Ah. Oh. Oops. I'm sorry. That didn't. That didn't go. Nope. Um, I can only navigate so much uh, while it's being zoomed I in. I think apparently. I saw what you're meaning. Um, yeah, yeah. It's right down the middle of the of this longer, it's kind of a long and yeah, narrow. Why did they do that? Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, Greg, can you comment on that? Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. What would you like me to comment on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the. Yeah. Well, why why would the uh, why would the state split a precinct? Oh um, no, I can't uh, because they're they're trying to get the uh, variances down to zero, and so they they do it by they do it by precinct block. They don't uh, they don't pay attention to existing precinct boundaries like I'm hopeful our council will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just have a quick question, which you may not know because it doesn't does. But you can probably can answer it. Does District 17 go into Skamania County? Yeah. Oh yeah, boy. I, yeah. This I is, mean, this, this is, is what a uh, this is really something else. Looking at these yeah. districts. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, Chair, I, I guess I would um, uh, offer up that uh, the challenge before this council uh, has to do with the council districts, not with the legislative districts or the congressional districts. I understand completely. Thank you. Just making a comment. <laughs> Lines I see. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. 
But that is a good question because what we've done here is taken the statewide legislative districts and just clipped, used the Clark County boundary to clip them out. Um, let me move on to the next precinct map because it, it shows in red. So we've seen the, uh, the legislative district boundaries and we can go back to this, the same area that's south of Battleground. What's, what is in red are the proposed precinct changes. And Rich, if you want to, if you're listening, uh, Rich from elections, um, certainly feel free to chime in here. But uh, if, if appropriate, or if, if I'm missing something, but these are the the proposed changes to election precincts based on uh, mostly the legislative districts, but there I think there's also some changes due to rebalancing of registered voter populations. That's accurate, Paul. So yeah. the majority is um, the little section just to the east of where battle is written on the map. That's an annexation even. So mm -hmm. this actually does encompass the annexations. Um, any precincts that over 1500 registered voters have been split or combined into multiple precincts. And it also lines up all of our precincts with the legislative boundaries that were proposed. Right, right. So these are these are uh, changes that are, I'm calling draft or proposed. They are certainly not final. Of course, they have to be approved by Clark County Council, but we have brought in brought them into this process uh, to uh, as, as we redistrict, as as we help you redistrict uh, the councilor districts, uh, so that we can keep them lined up and hopefully meet Greg's hope that that we keep the councilor districts aligned with with uh, precinct boundaries. The fair, Greg? Yes, please. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'd like to make just one more comment. Um, these red lines are what we would normally propose to the council if there wasn't any council lines being redrawn. This would be our standard yearly proposal to the county council is what these red lines indicate. They're minimum changes based on state law requirements. Thanks, Rich. I figured as much that this is work that would normally be done annually anyway. So, so uh, may I ask, Council, uh, Madam Chair, if, if Greg, if these changes are done, which would normally be done in the normal course of business, how much problem does that cause you when these precincts are realigned? Well, um, if we if we learn about those precinct changes in um, early January or late November, or November when the state committee makes its plan, then we have enough time to get that done and, uh, for the elections and for candidate filing. Um, because yeah, the, as we commented earlier, the state plan doesn't uh, necessarily uh, you know follow existing precinct boundaries, but at, at this late date, um, uh, if we are um, if changes are made to precinct boundaries in addition to what you see here, um, it, it makes it very difficult for elections and GIS uh, to meet the uh, timelines that I described earlier. Can I answer your question, Gary? Yeah, so I just don't know how to proceed if what would normally be done, uh, but we don't have the reaction time to make it feasible for elections. Um, I mean, how do we avoid not moving these precinct boundaries? Well, um, so what I, what I would suggest um, is that, um, I mean, okay, so if, I, if I'm the emperor and I get to make the rules, <laughs> Uh, I'd say you, you take the state plan as a given. You, you take the 1500 voter thing as a given. You take annexations as a given. And you then say, okay, here's the world as it exists right now. Um, and then you say, here's what I think the five council districts should look like. And when you say that, if you use the existing precinct boundaries, um, it, it can be done very quickly. Um, in terms of 
in terms of the GIS work and the elections work, the the uh, where it takes the time, uh, you know, of course, you know, for the five of you or at least three of you to come to a decision, and then uh, related to that are you know all the public notice hearings and all that stuff. Um, that's what really takes the time. Um, although I I also have to make note that it does require um, a lot of work for the elections and GIS to create the packages, you know, to create the actual legal documents that you guys need to be presented with to um, consider approving, you know, legal descriptions and maps and all that stuff. But, um, you know, the, 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 the biggest part of this, the, the key of this, which is the council making a decision, uh, in my view, could be done very, very quickly. There's, you know, you decide what you want to do, you tell GIS to create a map and boom, it's done. It doesn't take long for GIS to create a map when you tell them what to do. When you tell them what, you know, what parameters you want GIS to use, uh, GIS can do it very quickly. What do you say to that, Paul? I agree. But okay. the, trick, the trick is for three, at least three of you to tell GIS what you want. Okay, I think we're ready to move on, right, Council? So, in conclusion, uh, you, I'm going to say it one more time, if I could. Uh, existing precinct boundaries as soon as possible. Uh, February 8th is our, our, our really our, our target date. And um, if you have any questions or if I can be of any assistance in any way, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me. I'm I'm highly motivated to move this along as quickly as we can. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, go ahead with your other. Uh... All right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I, no, um, and we will be getting to the uh, question about compactness, but I, while we're on the, this is kind of along the road for, uh, for precinct boundaries. Uh, regarding these precinct boundary changes or updates, um, there is one on alternative A2, there is one segment of the boundary that is impacted by a proposed precinct change. And that is right here, it's circled in the, the purple oval. Um, and, uh, but Rich, uh, you sent me a last uh, quick email on that. Yeah, so when I drafted these proposed precinct changes that I would normally bring to you guys, I did not have alternative A, alternative B. I didn't consider any of those. So in this case, with that purple circled area, um, we there's two options. I can draw a straight line across that, make it two separate precincts. That's not complicated to do in that case. Or we can leave it like that, but then the boundary for district, either three or district four, would have to slightly be changed in order to encompass a full precinct. Or we can make it two separate precincts there. I did not have this map when coming up with those lines. Right. So to provide a graphic for what uh, Rich is talking about um, is uh, so again, this is just altering alternative A A two uh, instead of basically it would it would if we left the precinct or this proposed precinct as is, we would uh, you'd see the boundary go to the south. Um, if you see the the number six eighty nine. You see the brown line going south of that and then back up. This is following this new precinct boundary. Uh, so that's an option, but it would throw the population numbers off uh, significantly. As you see, there's, uh, you see the, the, you see two, two sets of population uh, deviations there. Uh, the original without the change is, a, for example, District 3 is 191. Uh, with that small boundary change to follow the new precinct, uh, it would be 1,054 below target. So that just that small change in that highly populated area would throw things off. Uh, there. What if you went no yeah. that much below target instead of 191 above? Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's it's just a dense densely populated area. And if you went north, if you took that boundary to the north, um, that would be the difference there. Um, District three instead of 191 above, it would be 777 above target. 
Uh, but that this may be what I'm hearing Rich say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm hearing him say that we could, whoops. Basically, uh, you know, there was a bound here in this purple oval. You know, there was a boundary there. There was a precinct boundary there, um, and Rich could just restore it, and no changes would be needed. No, no rebalancing would be needed. So, uh, if I'm understanding, precinct six eighty nine had been both parts of 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 that diagram there. Yes. Huh. I and think if you, um, if you uh, made that precinct whole, is there an easy place to add on a thousand to make it back in sync for the entire district? Because this is quite convoluted the way it's drawn now. Uh, which one is convoluted? The district three as a whole just wiggles all over oh, yeah. the place. So it if does. that were a thousand fifty nine or whatever it was below target, is there an easy place to add in a district or a precinct? Pardon me, that would uh, bring it back up. Uh, we could search for that. I mean, it's it's likely. Uh, I have not. I have. Uh, I haven't looked further yet uh, on that, but it's. I mean, it's a it's potential. Um, to, to swap swap uh, some precincts around, mm -hmm. but I, I think um, in terms of this this issue of um, I think it would, with Rich's permission and Greg's as well, it'd be my my request that at least for the current alternative A two, which is what we're looking at here, that we not that I guess that we keep that. Um, segment where it is, and not try to not try to do this or this. Yeah, if I might, uh, you don't um, you don't need my permission to. You guys can do anything you want, <laughs> um, but I would uh, I would uh, strongly support just splitting that precinct, uh, creating a second precinct, and and keeping the population uh, as it's shown there. Because um, you'll find once you start making little adjustments here and there, uh, where do you end? Um, right. So I would uh, I would strongly support just splitting that uh, precinct in two. And yeah. uh, because a, a 191 population above target and 53 above target is really good. It is good. Yeah. So I have a question just that uh, I started to ask and. How many if if this precinct was split, uh, Rich, do you know the number of each of the precincts? The number that would be in each of those precincts? I didn't do the quick math on <laughs> what's above and below when you use the, yeah. the north or south. Uh, well, the, this... mean, the north would be about four. See, I, I don't have population numbers. Paul right. has population numbers. I work only with registered voters. Okay. Uh, yeah. Total, in this north portion, uh, that's that's above the orange line, it's about 586 people. And to the south, it's uh, 1,245. So I, I would, I mean, just superficially, just based on what was presented, I, I was coming to the same conclusion uh, that Greg just uh, spouse, but you know, I was, and I don't know what's on the ground there, whether there's new developments and whether that upper portion, if it was split, will eventually balance out uh, towards that 1500. Uh, but I mean, do we need to, to, to make really good progress? Can we agree that that sounds like a viable plan is just to split it across, have two uh, districts? Because uh, the numbers would be balanced without looking at all these adjustments. Uh, again, I don't know where if you were able to find a trade off. Uh, precinct somewhere, I mean, it's just, I think it will become quite a mess and very complicated down the road. If we start going down that rabbit hole, as opposed to just cutting it across having the numbers work already. 
I mean, what's the downside to splitting it? I'd say from my perspective, the downside is if you split one precinct, why not split many? And that gets in violation of the uh, one of the two general precepts that you gave us at the outset. So um, that would be my perspective. Yeah. Um, if I can add in, I mean, if originally that used to be a precinct boundary, we only made that change because the legislative line right in that area required that precinct to be split in a different area. Therefore, I merged it with the, the northern and southern portion to pieces together just to keep our precinct count down. But that's not a problem to break that back into two pieces by any means. And, and Councillor Bowerman, well, I, I sure appreciate your, uh, your sentiment. Uh, there's something about life is full of compromises as well. So there's no. Oh, I'm familiar with those, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> and, and to answer, Karen, so th there used to be a boundary there. And if we don't split any others, then we're not going down that path that you're afraid of. You know, well, if we I'm afraid of it, I think it would be marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> can I also I'm ask very good? Uh, <laughs> can I ask Matt, Matt, Madam Chair? I do have a question here. So we're we're looking at map A2 and specifically this particular precinct. If if this um particular plan is under consideration, do we have the same issues with the other map where we have split precincts? We do not. We on on option for alternative B2, uh, it was free from any uh, impacts from the state legislative districts forcing precinct changes. So, without regard to what map we're looking at in terms of this particular precinct, will this likely be split into two based on the legislative actions, or does it matter about what map the council's considering with regard to this precinct? Legislatively, this precinct does not need to be split as presented. It's already been looked at. When I made these precinct changes, I took no consideration of alternate A or alternate B. I gave the maps back to GIS. They then put the overlay on top of A and B and found this discrepancy, but we did not use alternate A or alternate B when making our precinct changes. We had zero consideration of those districts as per those two alternatives. Okay, so so this proposed precinct boundary change is likely to continue to be a proposed boundary change where you split it in two? Uh, I would be? not propose to change that normally. Um, normally I would have sent to the council to have that entire shape maintain its shape shown on the screen in the blue line but if alternate B, or I think this is A2, were to be adopted, it would be fine to cut back on that original precinct line to maintain population distribution. Okay, all right. So this conversation about this precinct specifically relates to this um, this map. Yes, A2, yes. Okay. I wanted to ask just really quick because I, the, the uh, font is too small. Is the street going north and south? Is that 192nd? Uh, to the it's 162nd. East. 162nd is to the east of this precinct. Uh, let's see. Does that help? My. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Okay. What's over here? I guess I don't know if you can see my arrow. Oh, uh, I can't. No. Yeah. Is there a way to put precinct lines in there again? Just to I, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Oops. Uh, just a moment. One moment. How did I? There we go. There are the other precinct lines. And I'll zoom in again, but I don't do you want numbers as well? No, no, that's not necessary. I was kind of looking at this little jag that went off to the west. But it looks like it looks to is. Um, 
Is that a precinct line? That's a precinct line. If it's in blue, yeah, yes. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing is that we can split this precinct with the purple oval and not have to worry about reshaping and rebalancing alternative A2. Is well, I think, that, I think that's not decided at this point. Okay, uh, okay, sorry. But would be a definite part of what we uh, deliberate, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, shall we move on? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right, um, well, I was promising uh, also talk about uh, the compactness of the districts. So uh, I want to launch into a little example of what that means and how we measure it. Um, what I'm showing you, whoops, there we go. I'm showing you are two very hypothetical districts. Um, in the county, these are just, I just drew these uh, for an example. And um, a circle is the most compact geographic area. And um, what these two shapes show is that they're both the same area. So they're both 35 square miles in size, but the circle has a perimeter of 21 miles where this odd looking thing to the east has a perimeter of 39 miles. Uh, so of course that has the longer perimeter because it has all these corners and, uh, and whatnot. So most of the measures that I'm familiar with that measure, that try to put a number to compactness, to the level of compactness will compare the of the district with a circle, kind of a ratio uh, uh, between the uh, area and perimeter uh, of a district, along with the the same with a circle of the same area, and measure the perimeter against uh, uh, against that of the district. Um, that being said, um, there are, there are two there there are a number of different measures. Of, of compactness, uh, but they both use this circle idea of really comparing the, the, the districts to a circle. And uh, this this first one, this Polsby Popper score. Um, okay, so this is, I mean, in a nutshell, here, alternative B2 is more compact. The districts of alternative B2 are more compact. Both Both measures show that. Um, they're kind of inverted because here on the on the left, the Polsby Popper is the, the higher score means the higher compactness. The one on the right, the Groffman score, uh, the, uh, is the, is the lower the score, the better um, or in terms of compactness. I will point out here that um, on these graphs, these bar charts, uh, even though there's a big difference between, you see a big difference between the blue bars, note that they, that on the left, the, the numbers do not start at zero. Uh, they're, they're zoomed in to, you know, so that you can see the difference. Um, the uh, one on the left, the Polsby Popper number is, is a number from zero to one. And uh, the Groffman is just, is just a number above zero. Uh, the closer to zero, the more compact. But again, um, it uh, just in fairness, uh, neither of these scales uh, start at zero. Uh, again, just so just to kind of emphasize the the difference there. Are there any questions on this? No. As I look at it, though, it it appears to me that the the difference is less significant 
than it shows on these graphs. I mean, if you look at these graphs and they started at one, right, you would have a very slim difference, really. Right. Because you're looking polls. at 55, 5 versus 58, or right. uh, 38 versus 42. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so I was going to ask if it's available. Let's see the whole graph. I mean, graphs look dramatically different depending on scale and mm -hmm. their entirety. I mean, this isn't very compelling to me unless I knew, uh, you know, basically what the averages were across the state and what you try to achieve as far as uh, these these different measures. Actually, that's an excellent point. That is a very excellent point uh, in terms of what. Yeah, where did the state come up with with their with their uh, redistricting? What were their scores? Um, I at this point I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, that would be, um, in, I mean, in my mind, a very interesting way to to get a sense uh, of of uh, you know, what how far off or or uh, what the uh, what raises eyebrows and what what's you know within a range of acceptable tolerance? Is there a way uh, for you to find that out? I I, mean, I could certainly research that further. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would that would certainly be something to research further. And actually, yeah, looking at the, um, yeah, looking at the state uh, legislative districts uh, would be interesting to to get a sense for that. So okay. I'll do that. Okay. Any other questions? Right. Yes. Okay, good. Are there, uh, so this is the end of my presentation in terms of PowerPoint slides. I also have uh, my GIS software available here. If we want to dive into anything else, but uh, that's where I am right now. Are there uh, questions or anything you would like for? Oh, my question is really to to the chair. You know, obviously, I don't want to sacrifice quality for the expedient of time. I, you know, I, we obviously want to meet Greg's timelines, the auditor's timelines, if we can. Uh, so I'm wondering, just as far as process, you know, are we going to focus on one of these plans or come up with a third? Or, you know, if we focus on one of the plans and then made whatever tweaks were necessary to finalize it, that would certainly be, I, I think, a faster way forward other than trying to create a, an entirely third new third plan. Um, so I'm just wondering what what the chair and the other counselors think about how we proceed. Well, I, I take input from the other counselors as your desire. Well, as for me, I'd like to look at the maps more uh, clearly where I can see the uh, the precincts and the population in the lines and get an understanding of what was done. I I also have a, a question that spins off from from your 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 point, uh, Councillor, to uh, to Paul, and that is, um, as the the master here did. Did you think about doing a C2? <laughs> and uh, if so, uh, did you do it behind the scenes? And would that be something that you could share with us? Well, I, I, I think, um, I mean, I did mention that I created two alternatives, um, uh, B and C, and uh, that is this in red. Again, this was this was presented to the committee, but it really didn't uh, 
move forward. Uh, this was inspired by the notion of trying to keep the city of Vancouver uh, in, in District 3. And then the, the trade-off, of course, was to, let's see, let me bring up A2 or B. Yeah. Um, well, we can we can compare this to any other. Uh, well, you see the difference between, I'll, right, I'll compare this with the other two alternatives. Um, you see that alternative C in red uh, moves District 4 more into the orchards area or encompasses uh, orchards in order to uh, keep East, East Side Vancouver in District 3. I don't know what why the committee uh, did not follow through on your al alternative C here as as uh, as drawn, but um, frankly, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that as well with the street um, delineation in it, so we can really see, you know, where it is. <laughs> All right. Well, streets. Um, I can I can address. If you, if you want, I could I could address uh, why the committee didn't adopt uh, three. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. You were there. Um, I I believe um, two of the members of the committee uh, didn't like three because it didn't fix what they considered what, uh, the mistake that the voters made when they um, uh, approved the uh, current map. Is that, is that my is that a correct recollection, Paul? Do you think? I'm well. I know there was discussion of that. Um, I don't try and. But I believe the uh, also the yeah. compactness isn't as good on this. Uh, the uh, it's equal population equal is pretty good, but compactness wasn't yeah. quite as good. Um, yeah. But I think the bigger the biggest issue was that um, the mistake that uh, quote unquote uh, that. Two of the members of the committee believe voters made wasn't um, uh, again quote fixed by this plan. Manager, uh, this plan this plan addresses the issue of of uh, of not uh, dividing uh, of, of of addressing communities of interest of keeping communities of interest together. Uh, as Paul said, it it keeps the you know tries to keep the city of Vancouver in these two districts. Um, that was a big part of district four or of, of this plan C, map C. Councilor also. Thank you. Um, just considering the conversation about starting with something, um, uh, you know, we listening to the redistricting committee meetings, we know that B2 was had three votes. Um, it's got the compactness numbers, it's got the population numbers. I'm not saying we adopt B2, but if we're going to start somewhere, it would be, I think, the more reasonable place to start, just considering the numbers that we've seen and the data that we've seen. Um, and from we can go from there. But if we're talking about starting somewhere, it would seem like that would be the place we should start. And it, I'll just leave it at that. And then we can look at what other um, possible changes could be made. Yeah, I, I, prefer to start with A2, look at this third map. Uh, the A, the B2 uh, was the Democrat plan. And so I'm not sure that yeah, that's was my, I don't, I don't think it was a Democrat plan. Is that? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. They are the people that voted for it, except for our um, auditor. So I, I don't think you can label it as the Democrat plan. It's the one that looks like the the map that the voters voted did. on. Okay, well, yeah. So again, let me just rephrase. Let's just move this as quickly as possible since it's clear the direction is going. I have a question on uh, alternative C here. Uh, yes. You mentioned that it was to keep together uh, communities of interest. By that, do we mean neighborhood associations? 
I was more interested in the city of Vancouver when I when I uh, created this, and although I think you could say that uh, off the top of my head, I would say that neighborhood associations in the city of Vancouver are going to be are going to end at the city boundary. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any neighborhood associations that extend across a city boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, I would need to verify that. What is the main street to the east uh, of District 3 on this map? On the east side? It's running pretty close to 192nd. In fact, well, here's 192nd. Uh, Assuming you can't, I'll, I'll zoom in yeah, a little bit further. I see it. Yeah. Huh. So it's running east. Uh, here's it's running east of 192nd uh, to the boundary of uh, Canvas and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it it doesn't get the whole city of Vancouver. I think there's a portion in here. Uh, well, just again, I don't think you can see my mouse, but uh, there are some some areas. Uh, some. Yeah, there's a small portion of here at City of Vancouver that I just couldn't get looped in and still have the, the population balanced. Hmm. If if I could, Madam Chair, I'd like to take a moment just to um, uh, comment uh, on the on the B2 map. Um, when when the state committee uh, goes about its redistricting work, it of course uh, is thinking about the criteria set forth in state law regarding equal population, compactness, uh, communities of interest, uh, not favoring or disfavoring political parties. But in addition, it is also considering the existing maps, the existing boundaries, the existing district boundaries. Um, and while that's not put forth in state laws of criteria, it, uh, it, it seems very clear that is something the state redistricting committee is considering. And that is um, something the county redistricting committee considered as well. What is the current map? What is the current boundaries that are in effect as of right now? Um, the fact that the voters had approved a map um, was a relevant um, uh, fact for um, certain members of the committee. So uh, I wouldn't want to uh, describe the map as a um, you know one one political party or another. I would I would think about both these maps, or I did think about both these maps as to which one was the closest to the map that the voters had approved, the map that was in effect at the time the county committee was uh, doing its work. Thank you. Okay, so we've um, I think Paul indicated you. you indicated Paul that you were this is kind of the end of your presentation yes okay uh I think if we were to you know uh, work with this map C and a2 um, or even for that matter all three of them but uh, that that would be our starting point I don't think that this is enough information at this point to uh, necessarily eliminate any or all of them. That's my my point of view. I think that we should delve further into this. Uh, I think that if you'd like to have a map yourself, GIS can probably create a map for each counselor if they'd like to. I've requested uh, at least three maps, although I think I might request a fourth, and that is this this plan that we see on the screen right now, which I, which uh, I actually didn't know about or know to ask for. So, um, but I would take input from the council at this point. Madam Chair, I would just like to kind of go back to the charter language that says the redistricting master shall create a plan to be submitted to the committee. Um, we're so far off that right now that I don't know how anything we do going forward is going to be uh, legally defensible, frankly. Um, and having each of us come up with three or four maps, go, I just. I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting you come up with three or four maps. 
I said, you could have the maps printed for you so you can look at them. I, you know, you can go to online, I guess, and, and do that as well. But uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. I And I think maybe what you see in front of you might have been what the master presented. Um, so I misunderstood what you were suggesting then. So um, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I would say, though, just out of respect for what the committee has done to this point, even though they didn't present us anything, um, this three was not anything that they really considered seriously. So I, um, if we're going to start someplace, we've got B2 and A2. Uh, I, I, just out of respect for the work that they did, at least. Other comments? Sure. I'd uh, be interested in if we are going to use uh, A, B, or C as a baseline. Um, I think that the it makes sense to use the map that received the majority of votes from the committee. Again, respecting their work and what they were trying to do. Uh, it may not have been enough to move it forward, but it was a majority. So, uh, regardless of how uh, you'd like to bring partisanship into this and make it about uh, parties, even though there's been a lot of conversation about how that's not the direction this majority wants to go. Uh, I think following a map that did receive a majority of votes and hues to compactness and population very well and doesn't have the added problem of being specifically drawn to benefit a single counselor uh, would be the best place to start. Thank you for your comments. Um... Councillor Lance, they're always so useful. Many people think so. Thank you. Yeah, and many don't. Right. So it's an opinion. So it's taken. So I I do favor um, getting a plan in place because we we have a very short timeline. I'm a very objective oriented, and so, from my point of view, number one, we're, I, I don't want to focus on who voted in the majority or in the minority uh, at the committee, uh, because that's not legally where we are right now. Uh, I think we, we need a timeline and a next step. Uh, my preference is to go with A2 and split that one precinct and focus on that and then come up with Okay, when do we have another work session? Uh, how do we keep this in the public domain for transparency? Uh, how do we move forward to try to achieve uh, the goal that uh, Greg laid out for us? Um, are uh, Kathleen or um, Leslie? The next steps, I guess, could, would it be another work session or these, these have to be public meetings if we're going to work together. So I, I suppose it would be another, another work session or council time when we, when we revisit that. And we do want to do that fairly quickly. Do we, is there anything on the calendar at this point in time that would allow us to um, to look at this again, what is the? Yeah, so um, chair, this is Kathleen. So you can certainly add another work session. Normally the council does these on Wednesday mornings at nine. Um, but with that said, the council can do a special work session and we can post okay. it with 24 hours notice. Um, you could also put this on the council time agenda, but being that it's so focused um, and not and not knowing yeah. how long the conversation, I think a work session probably would be your best um, alternative. There are work sessions scheduled for the next three weeks. Um, so I don't know if you want to either have two work sessions on a Wednesday or look at a special time if you want to uh, meet earlier. I would prefer to have a special time to do it if if other counselors could attend to that if they would be available for it because we already are mounting up on our work sessions and if we can have another day to do that um, maybe we should check calendars and check with 
counselors about when when they are available and get as many of us available as possible for an additional work session at which maybe and, and then we would we would want uh Paul there again uh and uh so that that would be really helpful to have Paul there and 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 maybe Rich or you know as far as looking at these precincts and how they if you know if we're within lines, but I think Paul probably can do that and then we can check with elections or whatever. Um, if that meets with the council's approval, let's look at the calendar for an additional work session on a different day than a Wednesday. Is that okay? That sounds great to me. Um, would you address for just a moment how you envision this going forward? Typically at a work session, staff presents something. I don't envision that happening now, but rather that uh, the council has a start point and that the five counselors take it from there, asking Paul and Rich for information um, as we go along. But is is that is that different from your vision? No, no, that's that's what I'm thinking is that we we take it from here where we have mm -hmm. that have been presented to us. I'm I'm thinking that if there if we can man, if we need to manipulate the map, that we can have Paul uh, helping us to do that. That's where I envision his his help and and perhaps if somebody from elections wants to listen, if Rich wants to listen in, and if there are questions about any particular precinct or division thereof. Um, you know, that might be helpful too, but I, I, it would be Paul that's going to be the key person to help manipulate the map. So. Okay, so it looks like let's, let's have um, one of the staff look at kind of check all of our calendars for when we might be able to set that next work session. Um, chair, chair, if I could, I, I think it'd be, uh, I, I might, I'll suggest that. To the extent you can give Paul advance um, information about what you would like to be looking at at that work session, uh, it will I think it'll assist you to move this forward. Um, so, and uh, if you can if you can tell Paul what you want to look at, what you want to consider uh, in advance, he can provide that to you, and you'll I think be more productive. Yeah, yeah. One uh, to follow on that, uh, a possible workflow would be. Uh, GIS provides you with the large paper maps, uh, much like we've provided a few already. Uh, they'll have precincts, precinct numbers. And uh, one, one thought would be to provide a list of precincts that you, that you see being changed or uh, from one district to another. And uh, then I could get you some population summaries or even though you do see the population on the, on the, on the maps, uh, we could, just double check things there. Okay, and do you need that well in advance, Paul? A couple of days, I think. Uh, yeah. With with road shown uh, would be so helpful. Right. Um, our f we have a second set of maps. Uh, I think they've already been delivered, or they were I think delivered this morning. Um, that uh, had road labels uh, added to them. Right. Uh, but we could cer certainly add more, any any more detail needed, parks, uh, anything like that. It's uh, sometimes we just hold back a little bit because we a uh, cluttered map uh, can be an issue as well. That's, that's if, it's, if all the labeling uh, causes it to be unreadable. But thank right, you for that. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess we've got our work cut out for us now. I, I mean, I do, I, I think that what we are going to start with are at least the maps that have been presented to us and, and one or two of them may go off to the side, uh, you know, at some point in the, in our work session. But. You know, I may be overly optimistic here, but if at your work session, a uh, majority of you can say, we like this map. You can then, and I'll defer, of course, to your legal counsel, but if in that work session, three of you say, we like this map, you can then for, move forward to a public hearing 
and this thing can get this thing can get done. I believe that would be the case. Is that correct, uh, Leslie? Yes, at a work session, um, the council can vote by majority to accept or adopt a proposed plan to then take publish and take to a public meeting for public comment. And, and that just, public meeting requires how much notice? Ten days notice. Ten. It's ten days, but with the Colombian, it's I'd be safe like fourteen days, because they have they have different requirements and there are our record. And I'll reinforce again, if you, my experience with GIS has been, if you tell GIS the information you're looking for, the data you're looking for, uh, to allow you to make that decision, they'll give it to you. Paul has been fantastic. Uh, Madam Chair, I have two requests. Councilor uh, Matthew. So, one, someone reach out to the Columbian and see if they can shorten that notice timeline. I mean, that's an artificial timeline. We have a contract with them to publish our meetings. Uh, I think that would help a little bit. Uh, two, if, you know, once we further understand, uh, Paul, about really what this compactness graphs mean, um, I would like to see what A2 looks like with that lot, one precinct split with new calculations on compactness to see if that helped or hurt. Uh, in that one me metric. Um, let me, uh, if, if I may clarify, the, uh, the metric there was uh, before the precincts were were split or or reworked. So uh, that that compact metric uh, was yeah before the before I showed those uh, uh, jogs to the north and the south. Okay, well, I just want to make sure I understood that. So you did measure it with the split, with the original um, precinct boundary line. Yeah, that measure. Yes, thank you. That uh, that measurement, okay. yeah, was with the original. Okay, that clarifies. Chair O'Brien, this is Kathleen. Yes, Kathleen. Uh, an option, and Leslie can correct me, but I believe there is an option that we could post a hearing for the next um, available hearing date. And if we're not ready, and if there was not enough time to get this out in the public, the council at that hearing could continue it to a date certain in the future. I suggest we do that. So that we get this in expeditiously. Brian, that is correct. You can do that. Uh, the other uh, comment I just wanted to make is that if the counselors are wanting to provide information to GIS or asking for information, the suggestion is that uh, pursuant to OPMA that you can only, if you're sending emails, it can only include one or two counselors. Just a reminder. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, uh, I would I would say we should refrain from <laughs> too many counselors adding too adding too many squiggly lines or or whatever. I I just we we should try to work together on this and not create all kinds of um, confusion and multiple lines. So, but that said, it is our job to do this. So just uh, let's try to. Do it as well as we can with what we have. So, uh, I think, uh, if that we'll, we'll hear from our staff about when we can meet for another work session, special work session, and, uh, hopefully we can get this done fairly soon. Other than that, are there any questions or comments, uh, before we leave this work session? May I ask or clarify exactly what maps I should get in the pipeline right now to be uh, to be plotted for you? Um, I would appreciate the addition of C. Okay. With the precincts and the population in the streets. <laughs> we'll do. Well, yeah, we'll use the same template as we've made with uh, A2 and perfect. B2, and the street names will be included. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you. 
and, 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 would, uh, and would you want to see a summary or a description of the compactness and yes. population and the uh, communities of interest information that Paul's been able to assemble in the past for each of those three maps? No, I've jotted it down as you went, so I don't need that. But I would, I would like it, Greg or Paul, especially on map three, since we don't or C, since we don't, I don't think we have that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, map C. I'll take. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is. You may be aware of the, the, the smaller eight and a half by 11 PDF maps that were created for the, for A2 and B2 that have the compactness and whatnot on there. I will put alternative C into the same format uh, and also create the separate larger map uh, for alternative C that will have the, it'll have the population um, uh, variance much like as, as, as shown on the screen here with the, above and below target. And then uh, would the counselors want to see a listing of each of the precincts and each of the districts and each of those three maps? Yes. The, the, the precincts precinct. will be on the, on yeah. the map. But a, a listing, Paul, you know. Okay. Yes, please. Right. Hey, if you, uh, Paul, if you're clear on what what it is you, you've been requested and uh, mm -hmm. council will hear about when our next work session will be set uh, with our various schedules mm -hmm. i i will close this work session uh, during the work session and we are going to take a five minute break uh, and be back for council time thanks very much everybody thank good you. to meet everyone thank you thank, thank you. you paul that's great good seeing you